Good morning or afternoon to whomever. This is Maddie from Be Like Breen's Ministries. How are we today? So, welcome to the Victory Video Series, Episode 2. Hold on, feel a burp coming, sorry. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't like to do that out loud, you know. I'm trying to be decent. Have a spirit of gentleness, you don't need to be hearing that, so. Anyways... So, in the Victory Video Series Episode 2, we're going to talk about getting the foundation correct. So, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That is where you will find the gospel, what it is, okay? Because the gospel is our foundation, and it's important to make sure that our foundation is correct. Because if you don't have the correct foundation, you can't have victory without it. Simple. So, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Let's get into the word. Let's get started. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, also, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So underline that. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So that's the gospel. Christ, Christ died for our sins was buried and rose again on the third day. That is what you place your faith and trust in. So, hallelujah to that. So we're just going to let that sink in, let you guys meditate on that a little bit. And we're going to also read Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. That's another good place to know what the gospel is. So let's read it. Ephesians 2, 8, 8 and 9. It says, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we're not we're not saved by ourselves by our works or anything like that. We are saved by grace through faith, and it's the gift of God, not a, res, a result of works, so that any man should boast. So we're making sure that you guys get the clear picture. And we're gonna read Ephesians one verse five. Because, actually, we're going to start with uh, verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 1. So I want to read something that a lot of people gloss over. That's actually very important that we're going to talk about. So that way it gives you a little bit more confidence and faith. Helps uplift your spirit a little bit. Because hardly anybody reads these verses, but they should. Because it's God's word and it's important, but let's read it anyway. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Time out. So, so. Some YouTube preachers will preach that you have the free will to back out of salvation. Put a star or highlight chapter 1 verse 4 where it says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So before anything was created, if you are a saved believer, 
You were picked before the beginning of time. Think about it. Think about how awesome that is. And start praising God. Start saying thank you. And you can't thank him enough for that. You can't. It's impossible to thank him enough for that. So we're going to reread that again. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now verse 5 is going to repeat verse 4. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Is it our will or his will? His will. So who's the one that chooses who believes and who doesn't? According to scripture, it's God, okay? And people are going to say, well, you can choose God, but you can choose to walk away from salvation and that you could fall away. That means you lose your salvation, right? We will read some verses about that in another study. But that is a question that will be asked by unbelievers that don't do their study. But we're going to keep reading because it's going to get better. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So, verse 7, if you have a highlighter in chapter 1 of Ephesians, go ahead and highlight this verse too. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So highlight that, study that, read that, meditate upon it, and be excited. That's awesome. So who is salvation really on? Is salvation on us or is it on him? A lot of people are going to tell you that salvation is on us, that we have to maintain salvation by doing works. The third video of this series is going to be why once saved, always saved believers should do works. And there's four good reasons. None of them are because you could lose salvation. As a matter of fact, doing works for a believer is actually to your benefit. And that will be covered in the next video. So I will be making that one probably right after I make this one. So I'm going to have two videos up today or at least attempt to make two videos. YouTube's kind of slow over here, so I apologize for that. So we're going to continue reading because it's going to get really good. So verse 8, wherein he hath abounded toward us all in wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So here we go. Verse 11. More confirmation of verse 4, 5, and 7. Here we go. Un highlight this verse. Chapter 1, verse 11 of Ephesians. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And who's the his own will? Christ. Not our will. His. So these people telling you that you have a free will, you don't. I'm sorry, you don't. Scripture says you don't have a free will. Okay? Okay. If anyone argues that you have a free will to walk away from salvation, you don't. Because guess whose hand salvation is in? His, not ours, his. No, what we do <clears throat> with this gift through obedience determines whether or not we will either receive reward or suffer loss. That will be covered in the next video because that's actually one of the reasons as to why we should be obedient. 
as the once saved, always saved believers, rewards in heaven. And we'll read that in the next video. Nice little teaser for you. So we're going to keep reading because it is getting good. So verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom you also trusted after that you heard the gospel. Actually, we're going to highlight verse 13 because there's going to be a point. So here in verse 13, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed, here, here's the, here's the, here it is, after you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. What does sealed mean? If, the, if something is sealed, can it escape? Can a letter randomly unseal itself out of an envelope if it's sealed with a stamp or a sticker? Can a peanut butter sandwich escape out of a plastic bag if that plastic bag is sealed tightly? Hello? So, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 13. Okay, verse 14. You can highlight this verse too if you want. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So if you watch YouTube spiritual leaders and prophets and dreamers, you will never hear these verses read. And it's such a disservice. Disservice to those who are not in faith or new in faith that want to go to heaven and then they listen to all the riffraff crazy prophets talking about end times or other YouTube preachers that teach this repent or perish. If they would actually read Ephesians in these verses and understand what the gospel is and actually have a right definition of what repent means, which is to reevaluate everything, to have a change in your thinking, a change of mind. So for someone who has not placed their faith and trust in Christ yet, you would show them verses, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, that all we can offer is filthy rags without Christ. You would share those verses with them. So that way they have a change of thinking to rely upon Christ and not ourselves. Which is why you place your faith and trust in Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. That he died for our sins on the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day. That is the gospel. Anything else is not the gospel. So, first Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Does that give you a nice picture that as soon as you place your faith and trust in Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you're saved forever? It can't be any more crystal clear than that. How many times did we read the word predestined, sealed? What was the other word? Chosen in him before the foundation of the world, according to his will, which is God's will, not our will, God's. So whoever tells you on any spiritual channel that you have a free will, you can rebuke them immediately and show them these passages. Tell them this is God's will, not our will, God's. Salvation is his, not ours, his. It's his gift that he gave to us and that is your foundation folks it's unshakable you're sealed if that's what you believe hallelujah 
Alrighty, so thank y'all for tuning in to video two. I'm gonna hurry and upload this one, and then I'm gonna make the third video because there's gonna be some people are saying, well, now you have a license to see it if you believe Wednesday belly thieves, or you know how they mockingly comment. So we're going to make the third video is the four reasons as to why once saved, always saved believers should do works because we are equipped to do works. In Ephesians 2.10, for we are Christ's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, hopefully this gives you some confidence that you can place your faith and trust in Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and salvation is something you can't lose. And if you're still not sure, let's go ahead and read 1 John 5.13. I just want to make sure you guys get enough verses, confidence, We'll also read another verse that you're really going to love to. So let's just do these two real quick. So in case you're not sure. We're just going to read another verse to give you some confidence. Here we go. First John 5.13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name. That's the person of the Son of God, which is Jesus. That you believe on the name Jesus that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Wow, okay. So if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you can know for sure right now that you have eternal life. Scripture says it right there. Isn't that awesome? So anyways, we'll just leave that there for y'all. And I'll get to work on uploading this and I'll get the third video up. Thank y'all for watching. Take care.